royal board. It leaves me colder than a basement floor. The only moment I keep waiting for is when the day will be through. I never notice if it's dark or clear. What people say to me, I hardly hear. The passing hours are an endless year until at last I'm alone with you. Every night at seven, you walk in as fresh as clover, and I begin to sigh all over again. Every night at seven, you come by like May returning, and me, oh my, I start in yearning again. You seem to bring far away spring near me. I'm always in full bloom when you're in the room for every night at seven. Every time the same thing happens, I fall once again in love, but only with you. I say your performance was a bit ragged. You were so slow going around the throne, I almost caught you. Well, the audience seemed to like it. It's so hot in New York in the summertime. I'm glad we're closing tomorrow night. Wonder what happened to the air conditioning? Mr. Hiller probably turned it off to save money. Oh, would you blot my face, too? Up here, it's tricky. Who's Mr. Hiller? The house manager. You ought to know that. You've been playing his theater for the past year and a half. Oh, is that that evil little man who comes around and pinches? That's your department, sister. All I can say is let Mr. Hiller keep his air conditioning. If you can't take it with him, and where he's going, he'll need it. <laughs> oh, boy, it's hot. Say, if ever I play a king again, I'm going to be one of those Asiatic boys who just wears earrings and a sheet. Hey, what's your hurry? Pete. Hi, Ellen, honey. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You know my brother Tom, don't you? No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. All right. I'm fine, sir, and thank you for asking. I'll be out in five. Oh, my Pete, you look so nice and cool. Make yourself at home, won't you? Sit down anywhere. Oh, how was it, sir? Hot. Oh, um, your agent stopped by to see you, sir. Irving, what brought him out this clammy night? He didn't say. He just told me to tell you it was imperative that you and Miss Ellen meet him at McGuffey's bar next door right after the performance. Oh. Ellen? Yeah? Irving wants us to meet him at McGuffey. Okay. How'd you like Pete? Isn't he cute? He's from the South. No. Why, Ellen, honey, I never would have guessed it. He owns miles and miles of tobacco land in Virginia, and you ought to hear him chant. I met him two days ago at Hilda Swan's house, and I'm simply mad about him. Is that all? 
That's all. Roger. Miss Ellen seems quite taken, doesn't she? This will probably be one of those long affairs that drags on a whole week. The news overseas concerns the royal wedding in London. The British capital is already festive and happy in anticipation of the wedding, which is still several weeks off. Now, oh. as for the princess, the most closely guarded secret in England since radar is her wedding gown. The princess herself will see it for the first time this weekend. Chester, right. other news Please, at Miami, Florida, a new tropical hurricane seems to be approaching. Can I talk now? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Vaughan, I danced in Trafalgar Square the day her grandfather was married. Oh. I'd give anything to be there again this fall, wouldn't you? Yes, I like weddings, provided, of course, they're not mine. Oh, marriages are very healthy, sir. You say married men live much longer than bachelors. If that's true, they're only trying to outlive their wives so they can be bachelors again. <laughs> Haven't you ever thought of getting married, sir? Once, as a matter of fact, I did. But the young lady changed her mind at the last moment. I've been deeply indebted to her ever since. Good night, Chester. Gee, I wonder what Irving wants. I hope it's something that... My gosh, what a muscle it's like, cement. Oh, it's nothing. All us tobacco men get kind of strong. What from? Lifting money. <laughs> oh, come now. It wasn't that good. <laughs> good night, Eddie. Good night. Good night, Eddie. Good night. He's the only stage door man I know who isn't called Pop. Hello, Bill. Hi, Herb. Well, I couldn't wait for you backstage tonight. What is with that heat over there? Who needs it? So how was the show? Well, the first act was a little... Oh, no, Bone, how are you, baby? Fine, how are you? Ooh, you look so sweet tonight. Well, I do, don't I? Okay, come on, order. I got news. Big news. What's oh, happening? Can I have a Pete Cumberley? Well, how do you do, Mr. Cumberley? It's a great pleasure. Thank you, sir. That's very nice. Who is the square? Friend. Uh, Tom Collins, please. Uh, nothing to be nice. Hit me with a rod. Shall I give it to you? Well, come yeah. on, what is it? This'll kill you. My brother Edgar called tonight from England. He's ahead of our London office. Been there for years. Anyhow, the Mayfair Theatre people want your whole show for London. No. But quick, they want you there during the wedding season. England during the wedding. I like that. Oh, Tom. Ellen, honey, does this mean you'll be leaving me? Oh, yes, Pete. Isn't it wonderful? When do we open? Well, as soon as possible. Of course, you got to rehearse the English cast first. Hit me, son. What about transportation? Well, there's some French boat leaving a week from next Monday. Which one? Who knows what the name? It's in French. Don't worry, I'll get you on it. Ellen, this means we'll be saying goodbye in ten days. Oh, yes, Pete, and I'm so happy. Ellen. Oh, hello, dear. I was waiting for you backstage. That's why I'm late. I'm sorry. Ellen, who is this fella? Finish your drink, Pete. Did you hear the good news? We're going to England, and we're going to be there during the wedding. What are you doing here, sir? What do you mean, what am I doing here? Who's he? A friend. What are you doing here, sir? I demand an answer. Go fill your papers, will you? When are you leaving? That's an insult. What's an insult? What's the matter with you? You're not sending me this away. This is terribly embarrassing. I forgot all here. about Dick. What are you talking about? She's got a date with me. I think we ought to start packing. I'll have to buy all my new clothes before I go. You'll have time. We'll see you about I'll send the rest of the company over the week after you leave. I wonder what they'll be wearing. I don't know. Pay the man, will you, Irving? Yes, yeah, sure. How much do we owe you? May I? Yes. And please. keep the chain. Come on, girl. I have a little business to take care of. I'll meet you on deck. Okay, sister dear. Hello, Billy. This is goodbye. Thanks for coming down to see me off. It's hard saying goodbye like this after all we've been to each other. Oh, I know. It's been a lovely three days, but, but I'll be back soon. Oh, dear, I must go now. May I walk you up the gangplank? I'd rather you wouldn't. You understand. No. Well, it's just better that way. Write to me, Billy. I will. Goodbye, Ellen. I'll miss you very much, Linda. I can tell you that knowing you these past few weeks has been one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me. To me, too, John. Pete! Ellen, honey! I thought I went to the wrong deck. We had much time. Really? And I had so much to say. What? Well, you're going to be away. Well, yes, I... I know, Pete, but what? And suddenly knowing you're going to be away makes me realize my feelings for you. So I thought I'd, I mean, Ellen, honey. Visitors are short, please. Oh, dear, Pete, you have to go now. Goodbye. But Visitors Ellen, you better hurry right for what you had to say, huh? I will. Bye. I can tell you, Barbara, that knowing you these past few weeks has been one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me. Oh, I'll miss you, John. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Herb. I know you'll be a smash. Now, if you want anything, you ask my brother Edgar. He's going to meet you at the hotel. So long, Herb. Bye. So listen, how about... So long, Ellen. So long. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye. 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 See you soon. Yeah, so long. See ya. Hey, Bye. 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 Bye.
I'm betting eight to five on Dixie Boy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not. We gotta rehearse. What time shall I meet you? Two o'clock sharp in the gym. I won't keep you long. I'll be there. Don't worry. Well, don't be late. Okay. Good day. Good day. There's carbon paper in the middle drawer if you want to make duplicates. Uh, I'm not writing a letter. I was just doodling, waiting for an opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brindale. Lord John Brindale. And what's yours? Bowen. Duchess Agatha Bowen. Oh, oh, no, no, really. What is it? Oh, let's see now. E.B. E. Is that Ethel? Wait a minute. Bowen. Why, of course you're Ellen Bowen, aren't you? You're doing fine. It's very stupid of me. I should have known. Well, I only saw your show a few weeks ago. Please forgive me. Oh, that's all right. I know you have a lot on your mind. Oh, I, I can explain those two little episodes that you witnessed yesterday. Oh, you can? Yes. Then go ahead. Then go ahead. Well, you see, they're both terribly nice girls, and they're both so fond of me that I, well, I couldn't bear depriving either one of them. And, well, you know how it is. In order to be kind to people, one has to be a very, very good liar. Uh, t tell me, why were you following me? Following you? Yeah. Why, I was doing no such thing. I was only saying goodbye to a couple of... The same? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does this sort of thing uh, happen to you very often? Oh, all the time. And you? Constantly. <laughs> I guess we're both too kind to people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have to get stamped. Do you live in New York? Uh, no, I, I've been there on business for some time, but I'm just going home now for the wedding. The royal wedding? Yes. Yeah. You're going to the wedding? Well, I'm escorting someone, yes. Well, you really are a lord, aren't you? I'm afraid so. My, my. Haven't you ever met anyone who held a title before? Only Joe Lewis. <laughs> you know, I, I'm very glad that you're Ellen Bowen. Why? Oh, because it means that chap you're with is your brother, not your husband. Do you know what I did last night? No, what? I surveyed this whole boat, and I discovered that you were the most attractive girl on board. Well, thank you. And I kept thinking that what a pity it is she's married, because that's going to make things terribly awkward. <laughs> But it isn't going to be awkward at all now. Thanks for the use of the hall, Purser. Not at all. Well, if you see my sister on deck, will you tell her I'm waiting for her, please? I will. I like your boat. Mm, thank you, Monsieur. Oh, Monsieur Bowen, I have a favor to ask. On every crossing, you know, we have a gala benefit for the disabled seamen. Oh. And I was wondering if you and your sister would dance for us on that night. Oh, we'd love to. Just tell us when. Just one number would be sufficient. We don't want to ask you to. No trouble at all. I know it's an imposition to ask you to, but I would feel so we'd much... We'd love to. Don't worry, we'll do it. There's a fellow that won't take yes for an answer.
Thanks for showing up the rehearsals. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, John, this is my brother Tom. Tom, this is John. How do you do? Glad to know you. I just picked up John in the writing room. So I gather. He's a real lord. <laughs> oh, it's nothing at all. <laughs> Miss Bourne. Uh, yes. Kate Bourne. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, please. Oh, Tom. Tom is from Pete. Says he's very blue, except for his eye, which is black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's forget Pete for this trip, shall we? Excuse us. Gee, it looks a little grim out there, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Monsieur Boyne, I'm wondering if you and your sister would dance right away instead of waiting until 10.30. We're a little afraid of the weather. Well, you mean it might be a little, uh, rocky? Yes. Well, that won't bother us. We can handle it. <laughs> Thank you, Monsieur. Anytime you say. I'd better change my dress.
All right. What do we do now? Keep your balance. Oh, sure. Sure. Yes. Yeah, do come on up. Room 2, 11, 12, and 14. Okay. Who was that? Edgar Klinger, Irving's brother. He's coming up. Oh, I'm so happy, Tommy. I wonder what the princess is doing this morning. Why don't you call her and ask her? I wonder what I'd be doing a month before my wedding. Probably trying to figure a way to get out of it. Do you really think so? You know you wouldn't. So would I. How'd you do? I'm uh, Edgar Klinger. Oh. <laughs> we didn't know uh, that Irving and I were twins. No, we didn't. Oh, I must say, but he should have told you, you know. After all, this is a pretty box of pickles. Uh, may I come in? Of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you do? We're so happy to meet you at long last. My, it's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is rather, isn't it? Uh, I do hope the rooms are satisfactory. Oh, oh they're fine. It's a miracle you get them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite. The wedding has packed things up a bit, but... Uh, then there are ways. Uh, how's everything at the theater? Oh, seems to be humming. The dancers are coming to audition this afternoon. The singers tomorrow. Excuse me, please. Uh, hello? Oh, hello, Johnny. How are you? So Ellen's boat romance. John Brindale. Oh, you know him? No, the family. Very old. Uh, they do say that young John is a bit of a chaser. He didn't have to chase very hard after Ellen. She stood still and waited. <laughs> this afternoon? No, they're auditioning all day. Just a minute. Tom, you don't need me this afternoon, do you? John wants me to drive down and see his old country home with him. Well, I suppose it's all right, but I should think you'd want to come along and see who you're working with. Well, I never notice anyone but you. John, but I, I want you home for dinner. And no dates at night until after we open. You'll come strolling in at 4 o'clock in the morning and be all tired out next day. Yes, Papa. It's all set. Well, Tom, you pick me up. Okay, I'll be ready. Bye, Johnny. Shall we? Yeah. yeah. I'll see you at 7. And be back. Oh, I will. I will. Cheer up. <laughs> Goodbye, Edgar. Oh, and if there's anything you need, do call. Thank you. After you. Uh, tell me, old boy, how are things in the colonies these days? Oh, fine. Fine. These English clothes are terrific. Frightfully amusing time. What? Yeah. Got a match? Thanks. I hear that shaving lotion's great stuff. Do you ever use it? Oh, every day. Sorry. I thought you were him. How odd. Thank you. Well, I must get back to the office. You know where the theater is, don't you? Sure. Well, I'll see you later. Cheerio. Okay.
Hello again. I wish you'd stop following me. Following you? I'm not a bit flattered. I'm Charles Gordon, your stage manager. Oh, it's nice to see you. Uh, everything's ready, sir. Oh, good. Uh, see that girl in the green dress near the end changing her shoes? Uh, yes, sir. Let's begin with her. They can each show me a few steps. Very good, sir. Uh, your name, please. Anne Ashman. Thank you. Will you begin, please? Oh, yes. Miss Anne Ashman. Try a few steps with me, please. Oh, dear. Can't you dance with a partner? Well, I couldn't till a moment ago. We'll try. We'll take something easy to start. Uh, may I have a pickup, please? You should have seen the expression on your face when you saw me. How did I look? As if I were a dentist. Very well. Thank you. I think you'll do fine. Will I really? Sure. It's very nice of you not to hold what happened against me. I do, a little bit. Well, what can I do? You can have dinner with me some night. Well, I should love to. How about tonight? Well, I don't know. I, uh... She'll do fine. Pick up a date. Thank you. Who's next? Much further? No, we're almost there. My, you look pretty. I know. What do you have to do with the house? Get the wedding present. We sold practically everything at auction except for one set of cold pour china plates. I was supposed to get those when I got married. Seeing there's precious little chance of that, we decided to hand them on to the prince and princess. What is a precious little chance? Oh, I don't know. I think you have to enjoy living with yourself before you have nerve to ask anyone else to. Besides, you know how I am. Oh, here we are. John, it's beautiful. Yes, it was. I think they're in here. Oh, what a wonderful floor to dance on. Yes. How long since anyone's lived here, John? Oh, about five years. No one could afford places like this today. Mm, I imagine you missed it terribly. No, I don't think I do anymore. I just don't have anything to replace it with. I say, what time do you have to be back? Mm, seven sharp. Oh, I wish you could have dinner with me. I don't know when I'll get another free evening. There's some sort of party every night from now on. Can't you? Mm, I don't know. You know how town is. Will you try? Yes, I'll try. Good. How was the afternoon? Oh, it was wonderful. How were your dancers? Dancers? What do you want to do tonight? Oh, I'm kind of tired, Ellie. I thought I'd just skip dinner and go straight to bed. Would you mind? Oh, no, no. It's a good idea. That country air really knocks me out. Yeah. You sure you don't mind? Oh, gosh, no. As a matter of fact, I think I'll turn in right now. It's all right with you. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's been a kind of a rough day. Yeah. Uh, good night, honey. Good night, Tommy. Good night. Sweet dreams.
More coffee? Thank you. Yes, Ellie and I have done quite a few shows together. You like to dance? Yes, yes. It's hard work, but it's fun. What made you decide to dance? Oh, a very silly reason. How silly? Well, when I was 11, I fell in love for the first time with a boy much older. 12? Mm, 30. <laughs> His name was Alonso, and I was so happy that suddenly all I wanted to do was to dance. So I figured that if I danced when I was happy, I should be happy if I danced. Is that silly enough? I think so. <laughs> I felt so good about it, Alonso. I used to close my eyes and pretend I could dance all over the floor, walls, even the ceiling. If you ever learn to do that, I can get you a very good bookie. <laughs> you want anything else? <laughs> no. You better not take me home. Why not? Well, it's a long way, and besides, this is Friday. Friday, I have to stop and see my father. Oh, I'd like to meet him. Cabby. All right. Uh, what's the address? 150 Mitchell Street. Cabby, could you take us to 150 Mitchell Street? Love to, Governor. Love to. Wait, will you please, driver? Love to, Governor. Love to. See, that's my father. He's the proprietor. Oh? Oh, dear, I do hope he won't offend you. He's quite impossible, really. He and my mother have been separated for three years, and I have to stop here every Friday and get her money. Why didn't your mother do it? Well, they're not speaking to each other. So I say to him, McBride, every time you get four drinks under that belt of yours, you become a bloomin' nuisance. And what's more, every time you fall down, you chip a piece out of the bar with your chin. So I say from now on, Annie, well, my little girl, how are you, dear? Hello, Jamie. Tom, this is my father. Father, this is Tom Bowen. Glad to know you, Mr. Ashford. Pleased to meet you, sir. It's at the Royal Cup. Bowen, eh? I used to know Willie Bowen. Good old Willie. Married a girl we used to know named uh, Gladys Oxley. I don't think you knew Gladys, Annie. Very happy they were for years. Then one night, good old Willie threw her right out of the window. Nobody knows why. But I always figured that they must have had an argument. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd be any relation. Why, no, I don't believe I have any relatives over here. Over here? You see, I'm from America. America, America, get out of my pub. Leave the premises. I'm not on speaking terms with the United States. Gee. How dare you bring another yank to my tavern? Out to you here, out. Oh, wait a second. What's the matter with the United States? Matter? You owe me money, you do. Where is it? Here, look at this. Two pound ten run up for your blooming soldiers. And what does it do? Upped it. Walked out without paying. I'll not serve you a drink. Now, stop it, Jim. The, the royal cup. <laughs> Well, now, I can't allow Anglo-American relations to be threatened like this. I'd like to square that bill. Tom, you shouldn't. Oh, sure. How much is that? Two pounds ten? Let's see. There you are, sir. Now, there's a gentleman for you. Not at all like that other yank you're so fond of. Yes. Well, now, you can just add ten bob to that and give it to me for mother. Mm. Has she found out when we go to the palace yet? Or is she keeping it from me? Three pounds, Jamie. You see, we uh, sent a little token to the Royal Highnesses for the wedding. And according to the papers, anybody who did are allowed to see the wedding presents. That's a nice custom. Three pounds, Jamie. Oh, all right. Here. What you counting for? Don't you trust me? Just like a mother. No faith. You're five shillings short. Oh? That's what you might call a typographical error. Here. <laughs> Thank you. We better go. Good night, Jamie. Good night, dearie. Good night, pal. Good night, buddy. To the Royal Cup. Yeah. Thanks. Looks like Mother is still up. Ever since she and Jamie separated, she can never get to sleep till I get home. Let's walk a minute and get some nice fresh fog. Who, uh, who's the Yank you're so fond of? Hal Rayton. He's my fiance. You don't sound very happy about it. Oh, I am, really. Is it a secret? No. Oh, this is ridiculous. He's in Chicago. Illinois? He lives there. And you live here? Yes. Well, if you keep that arrangement after your marriage, you'll be very happy. <laughs> How long since you've seen him? Oh, about two years. Two years? Well, I've never thought of not being. 
Do you hear from him very often? Every few days, as a rule. Oh? Actually, I haven't heard from him for two months now, but he's probably been busy. I wrote to him tonight and told him I was in your show and asked him to call me opening night. I assume you have some plans about getting together in the future. Oh, yes. Are you going over there? Is he coming over here? Or are you going to meet in the middle? You see, he works in Ogilvy's department store in Chicago. Oh, well? Well, as soon as he makes enough to send for me or I make enough to go over there, we're going to be married. That's fine. You, you don't mind, do you? Mind what? My getting married, I mean. I should love to go out with you again. I had an awfully good time. So did I. Of course I don't mind. Actually, I'm kind of glad you're all tied up. Now we can go out and have fun without any pressure, can't we? Yes. I guess so. Good night, Anne. Good night, Tom. Mr. Irving Klinger. We're ready with Mr. Edgar Klinger in London. Okay. Go ahead, please. Hello, hello, Ed. This is Irv. How are you, twinsy? Buzzing, old boy. Simply buzzing. I got a fast note by airmail from Tombo this morning. He says everything is terrific. Oh, well, that is good news. Uh, tell me, have you heard from Tom? No. How are things? Oh, absolutely superb. I think we should have a fantastic opening night tomorrow night. Fantastic. Uh, what about Ellen? Tom having trouble keeping her caged up at night? Oh, no, quite the contrary. She's been frightfully conscientious. Goes straight home from the theater each night. Uh, Tom's the one who's been romping about. Tom? No kidding. What'd he do, catch himself a chick? No, no, no. Tom's quite well. Uh, he's taken a fancy to some girl of the show. Pretty little thing she is, too. Hey, Eddie, what I called you about, call me after the opening, will you? That light in the window's gonna be me sitting and waiting. Uh, I will, old boy. Don't give it a second thought. Uh, oh, by the by... How's the mater? Oh, Mom's fine. Oh, splendid. Do give her a peck on the cheek for me. I got you. Take you tomorrow night. Pip now. Pip now? Dig you? What's all the commotion about down there? Oh, it's some regiment that hasn't paraded its finery in years. Gosh, you can just feel the excitement growing, can't you? After all, the wedding is only a week off. <laughs> I wonder what the groom is doing this morning. Well, why don't you call him and ask him? Very funny. Well, I thought it was. Hmm. What time did you get in last night, lover boy? Oh, around 11, I guess. I don't know. I didn't pay much attention. Well, I did. It was around 2. My, you're a busy little man, these PMs, aren't you? We were just having a few laughs. Just a few laughs. That's all. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, come in. Morning. Why, Johnny, what a pleasant surprise. How are you? Fine. Hi, John. Hello, Tom. I thought this was as good a place as any to see the parade. Oh, we have a sensation of you. Oh, before I forget. Your ticket for the opening. Second row right on the oh, aisle. Oh, wonderful. Thanks very much. What time is the parade? We should pass here any minute. Oh, I say, Ellen, it's wonderful seeing you again. How's the show going? Oh, just fine. It's been a long time. I know. Four days. Look, tomorrow night after the opening, Edgar's giving a party. You're going with me, okay? Okay. It'll take a little doing now. Why? Well, there's a huge affair being given, and I'm supposed to take someone. Oh, but you can get out of it, can't you? This is my opening night. Besides, if you don't take me, nobody will. I've been out with a soul, but you couldn't have gotten me. I'll get out of it. You're looking so well, you say. Thank you. I think about you so much. I think about you, Ellen. What? I say, I think about you. It's so different from anything I've ever felt before. How? Well, first of all, I'm not interested in anybody or anything I do. And that's completely new for me. I say that's completely new for me. Ellen, I, I think this is getting very serious. What a parade. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Parade? Uh, oh, is it over? Wait, I'll tell him to come back. Oh, ignore him, Johnny. I'm so excited about tomorrow night. Come on, girl. We're due at the theater five minutes ago. Mm, in a minute. Do you realize we've only been out at night together about three times since I've been here? Well, come on, come on. Well, just a minute. What's that you're playing, Tom? The song she's supposed to be rehearsing at the theater now. Oh, why don't you rehearse it here? Oh, that's a good idea. Is that right with you, Tommy? All right. I wake up inside each morning.
I'm sorry to keep you working so late. What about our last two numbers, Tom? We don't have to rehearse those. You were fine in them this afternoon. Yeah, I thought so, too. Mm. show looks pretty good, doesn't it? Not bad. And, excuse yes. me. Uh -huh. Don't forget tomorrow night. The opening? How could I? Oh, yes. Do try to make that. We'd love to have you. <laughs> no, I met afterwards. Edgar's giving a party. We'll go together. Oh, Tom, I can't. You can't? Why not? Hal is calling me. Well, that's right. I forgot all about him. Well, it doesn't matter. It's... I wouldn't bother, except I haven't heard from him for such a long time now, and I, I do have to talk to him. Taking the bus home tonight, Anne. I'll be right with you. I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, well, that's all right. That's, that's all right. What time tomorrow, sir? Three o'clock for the company, and eleven for Miss Bowen and me. Yes. Eleven? Well, what for, Tom? I want to take those two numbers we didn't do tonight. Oh, I thought you were satisfied with them. Still a few rough spots. Say, what happened to you? Did you get stood up? What are you talking about? What a manic, depressive life you lead. It's going to be a marvelous party tomorrow night. I'm going with John. Who are you taking? Where's the key? Well, you have it. I have not. I gave it to you. I suppose I'll have to go all the way down to the desk and... See? If you think nice things, all doors open to you. Is that your message for the day? <laughs> Flowers! For me? I wonder who they're from. Not from me. Oh, well, that I know. Who? It's from John. He can't make the opening. He can't? My, what a shame. I had a feeling this morning he wasn't going to be able to make it, but he just didn't know how to tell me. Oh, isn't that terrible? Now, isn't that terrible? He's weak. And I just hate weak people. Yes, dear, I know you do. Up one minute, down the next. What a manic, depressive life you lead. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're even. <laughs> Who are you going with tomorrow night? I don't know. Well, why don't you take me? I think we should go together anyway, don't you? After all, we're the stars of the show. Yes, I think we should. Miss Bowen, may I escort you to Klinger's clam bake tomorrow night? Why, I'd be delighted. And what a surprise you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tommy, let's be terrific tomorrow night. We'll be cosmic. Stupendous. A smash, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> and, Ellen, huh? don't forget, that's still the most important thing. Yes, Tommy. I know it is. Good night. Good night. <laughs> So I said it, so you heard it, so you made it, so what? So this, it's the last time I'll ever go to a party with you. Well, you put that in writing. Well, you're always making cracks, making cracks. Like what? Well, you always humiliate me, humiliate me. No. Didn't your mother never teach you no manners? I never had no mother, we was too poor. Hey, what's the matter with you lately? You used to tell me you loved me. You used to treat me like a high-class dame. No. 
Well, you, since you? So are you. Ah, oh, there, so you admit it. I ain't admitting nothing. I'll give you one more chance. Do you love me or don't you? No, I don't. Quit stalling. I want a direct answer. Listen, kid, there's one thing about you I can't understand. How could you believe me when I said I love you when you know I've been a liar all my life? You've had that reputation since you was a youth. You must have been insane to think I'd tell you the truth. How could I believe you when you said we'd marry? Why, you know I'd rather hang than have a wife. I know I said I'd make you mine. Now, wouldn't you know that I would go for that old line? How could you believe me when I said I love you when you know I've been a liar? You sure have been a liar. A double-crossing liar. A double-crossing liar. All my doggone cheating lies. You said you would love me long. So what? And never would do me wrong. Stop bending the soap. Faithful you. Always be me. Why, baby, you must be loony to trust a lower than low two timer like me. You said I'd have everything. Get her. A beautiful diamond ring. Ha ha ha. A bungalow by the sea. A bungalow, yes. You're really naive to ever believe a full of baloney phony like me. Boy, I sure must have lost my hand. You ain't lost nothing you never had. What about the time you went to Indiana? I was lying, I was down in Alabama. You said you had some business you had to complete. What I was doing, I would be a cat to repeat. What about the evenings you was with your mother? I was romping with another honey wham. Baby, leave us, not forget that I'm a heel. How could I believe you when you said you loved me? Why, you know, I've been a liar. A good-for-nothing liar. Oh, my good-for-nothing liar.
darling, I just had to come. I just had to. Oh, I'm so Who's glad that with Ellen? Who? An opening the chap you. with the accent. Him? Yes. Brindale. Ah. They've become very good friends. Oh, yes. Don't you think we should be getting over to Edgar's? Later, Johnny. Tonight's my night, and tonight I want to be alone with you. When he didn't show up at the opening, I didn't even feel like going on. How'd you get away from your party? Oh, I just walked out. I couldn't stand not being with you tonight. Ellen. Ellen, I think we're in love. Yes, darling, I know. Well, what are we going to do about it? Nothing. Well, we can't go on in this indefinite state. Well, aren't you happy? Oh, you know I am. So am I. Let's not kill it with improvements, huh? But something might happen. Like what? Well, someday you might look over my shoulder and see someone else. Someone else? Yes. Too late now to forget your smile. Imagine if you ever found out to get us a booking someplace in South Africa just to get me away from you. Would you forget about me in South Africa? But how could I? close for you, Tommy boy. Thanks. But the show went well, eh? Oh, fine, fine. I didn't feel like going home straight after the party, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Well, you're just in time. It was announced we go to see the presents on Monday. Thanks. I was just about to try on my suit for the palace. I slip into it. 
You have a look. Then you can tell me what you think, eh? Sure. Oh, uh, by the way, isn't this Anne's night to visit you? Yes, yeah, she was by about an hour ago, picked up her money and stole away like a pickpocket. Did her call come through from Chicago? Now that blooming blighter never called. She must be upset. Well, I couldn't say. I don't know how Annie feels about anything. She's not an easy one to get to know. Very quiet she is, but deep. At least I hope she is deep. Or else she's wasting a lot of her time being quiet. <laughs> well, brace yourself. What do you think? Do I look like a gentleman? Jamie, you look like a banker. But do I look like a gentleman? <laughs> it's written all over you. I got it this afternoon from Percy Monroe. Last year when he got pneumonia, the bought it for him to be buried in. But he recovered. <laughs> Well, my only advice is, if you meet the royal family, I wouldn't bow too low. Remember, this is a wedding, not a coming out party. I see what you mean. I'll watch it. Are you excited? Excited? No, I'm just scared. Nervous and scared. Why? It's meeting the old crow again. I haven't clapped eyes on her in three years. I know. It's funny if it wasn't for this royal wedding, probably I'd never have crossed her path again. I'll tell you what, on Monday I'll call for you and take you down to meet her. I'll give you moral support. Now, that's nice of you, Tommy. Unusually nice of you. You were a good man, you are. I don't know what Annie is doing waiting for this knucklehead in Chicago when she knows a fella like you right here in town. That's love, Jamie. What about you? Do I look like the settling down kind? Come on, let me out. Uh, I'll do the bending. I'm dressed for it. Thank you, Tommy. Good night, pal. Good night, buddy. Everywhere an orchid grows, you are. Everything that's young and gay, brighter than a holiday. Everywhere the angels play, you are. You're like Paris in April and May. You're New York on a silvery day. The Swiss South as the sun grows fainter. Your lot loman when autumn is the winter. Your moonlight on a night in Capri. And Cape Cod looking out at the sea. You're all places that leave me breathless. And no wonder you're all the world to me.
Absolutely fantastic notices, everyone. You could stay on for years. Have you seen the dailies? Rather. Oh, we're so thrilled. There's been an eight-week call at the libraries. There's been a what? At the what? The libraries, old boy. That's what we call our ticket brokers. Oh. They want blocks of seats eight weeks in advance. Why don't you say so? Oh, Tom, did you see the one where they say we're brilliant? Where? Oh, well, Edgar, have you called Irving yet? I'm off to the office now. I'll take it to my room. Edgar, sit down a sec, will you? I want you to do a favor for him. Oh, at your command, old boy. Look, when you call Irving, ask him to find out what happened to a boy who used to work at Ogilvy's department store in Chicago. His name is uh, Hal Rayton. I've written it all down. Oh, right you are. Can you do that? And uh, don't say anything to anybody about it, will you? It shall be graveyard, old boy. Graveyard. Right. Thank you. Know. Thanks. This is New York. We're ready, London. Mr. Irving Klinger is on the line. Hello, hello. Irving there. Edgar here. Hey, Eddie, so how are things? Buzzing right along. Smash, huh? So how are the notices? Wizard, old boy, wizard. That bad, huh? No, 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 no. Wizard. Wizard. Oh, wizard. <laughs> yes. Now, look, Tom wants you to follow up on a chap named Hal Rayton. R-A-Y-T-O-N. Hal Rayton, huh? What does he do, a single? Look, Mr. Rayton is not in the theatrical profession. He ain't in the theater, so who needs him? Well, it's a personal matter of Tom's. Now, when last heard from, Mr. Rayton was employed at Ogilvy's department store in Chicago. Ogilvy's, dig you. I'll throw the hassle to our Chicago branch, have the whole mess in your lap in a fast two days. Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. Just follow up on the Rayton matter and let us know. Natch, I just said... Pip, now. Oh, oh, yes, uh, uh, dig you. <laughs> oh. There's Jamie for you. Wouldn't you know he'd be late even to the palace? Now, take it easy, Mother. Maybe the traffic was heavy. It's not the traffic, it's Jamie. Ever since I told him I don't like to be kept waiting, he's been keeping me waiting. You know, Mother, there's an old Spanish proverb which goes, he who does not love the faults of his loved one does not love at all. Mm -hmm. That may be well and good for the Spanish, but I'm English. Do you know what I think? No, dearie? I think he's all excited about seeing you. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. How do I look? As elegant as can be. <laughs> Tommy, tell him he's going too fast. Driver, could you slow down a little? Oh, yes, sir. What do you say we step off and have a quick one there? To the elf of the Royal Cup, eh? Sit back, Jamie. We're not stopping anywhere. Well, tell him to go a little slower. You can't go any slower. And don't be so nervous. Now, when you see her, be sure you act like the gentleman you look like. I will, but if she says one word of criticism, I'll hit her on the head with his cap. You'll do nothing of the kind. Here we are. Stop here, driver. Walk the rest of the way. Come on now. Don't don't lose your nerve. Get in there. Go on. Hello, Jamie. Good day, Shadow. Jamie, your suit's handsome. Handsome. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. The traffic was heavy today. I told the cabby to go as fast as he could. Shall we go? Oh. Allow me. Jamie, don't. I knew the toll. There are some days when you can do nothing wrong. <laughs> do you think they'll stay together? Sure. I hope so. For them as well as for me. I could never have left Mother alone. Now you can get married and forget about it. Yes. Yeah. Good evening. Edgar. I have the information you requested regarding Mr. Rayton. Oh, what? Well, it's nothing terribly exciting. Mr. Rayton still works at Ogilvy's. He's still in the luggage department. He used to live in Chicago proper, but not long ago, he and his wife moved to Evanston. His wife? Why, yes, he was married several months ago. My, my, my. I say, who is this chap, anyway? Oh, he was engaged to a girl in the show. I was just finding out about him for her. Oh, I say, that's frightful. Yes, isn't it? Well, what are you so pleased about? I always smile when I'm heartbroken. I better tell her. Oh, not now. Don't you think you should wait till after the performance? It would seem kinder. Maybe you're right. Edgar, you're a real pal. I'd stick up for you any time. Well, thanks, old chap. That's frightfully decent of you to say. Well, if you'll excuse me. All right. Oh, I shall be around to pick you up early tomorrow morning. What's tomorrow? Why, the royal wedding. Ah. And I shall take you someplace where you'll see all the pageantry. Great. Second act, Mr. Dorian. Right. Thank <laughs> you.
Forgotten flat in Haiti I couldn't tell you how I got there I only know it was so hot there She took my hat politely And wound her arms around me tightly But I remember nothing clearly Except the flame when she came near me Her eyes at the fire of surrender And her touch, it was tender And I guess in the moment is that You forget about your hat So if you go to Haiti There is a girl I know in Haiti If you can find her, you'll adore her Just look around till you found someone Who has a blue gray fedora. I think of that gorgeous creature when I'm all alone. Whenever I do, from down inside there comes a groan. That son of a gun in Haiti has got the prettiest hat I own. And when it is bleak and chilly and life is flat, I think of that Haitian dilly and think I'd better go get my hat.
anybody to take you home? Good. Good night, Mr. Byrne. Night. Anne, I've something to tell you. Yes? I hope you won't think I've butted in where I shouldn't have, but uh, Jamie told me your friend didn't call. Oh? I didn't ask. He told me. I don't quite know why I did it, but I decided to try and find out what happened to him. Did you? Yes, I did. Well? Anne. He's married. Married? I'm sorry. How wonderful. How simply wonderful. Oh, Tom, thank you. Oh, it was nothing. And Yet I've been worrying myself to death over him on account of you, and he's been married all the time. Isn't it wonderful? What do you mean, on account of me? Well, on account of me being in love with you, and you being in love with me. I'm in love with you? Well, aren't you? Yeah. What a mess. Why? The next thing that happens, we'll be thinking about getting married. I'm thinking about it right now. There, you see? Well, don't you want to marry me? Yes, I do. And it isn't you, it's marriage. I'm afraid I couldn't be married and make a go of it. I've been living one way too long. With me, it's always been work. Everything else has just been a side issue. It isn't because I don't want to, it's just that I... I don't know if I could change. And I know I'd be an awful flop as a husband. Do you understand? I think I do, Tom. What do we do? Perhaps you'd better take me home. Tom, I only disagree with one thing. What's that? I think you'd make a marvelous husband. You do? Yes, I do, Tom. back early. It isn't early. I thought it was. Well, it isn't. It's late. Is it? Hmm? I didn't say anything. Tom, John wants to marry me. He does. That's funny. Well, it might be to you, but it's terribly serious to him. He's very much in love with me, and he says he's found a new faith in everything. All on account of me. How do you feel? Well, very constructive. I never thought I'd live to see the day you'd inspire anybody to do anything but slug it out. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Make fun of me. I'm sorry, Ellie. You really are involved this time, aren't you? Up to here. What are you going to do? I don't know. I was rather hoping you'd make up my mind for me, like you usually do. <laughs> it sure is funny. Why do you keep saying that when it isn't funny at all? It's very important. I know it is. I only meant it's funny because Anne wants me to marry her. She does? <laughs> My gosh. It sure is funny, isn't it? Why? Well, I don't know. It's just funny, that's all. Well, what's so funny about someone wanting to marry me? I have a few good points, you know. Tommy, are you really in love with her? Up to here. Oh, my. Well, I wonder what would happen if we just threw over all our principles and went ahead and got married anyway. Well, you'd stay here in England with John. Well, why would I stay here? You can't go traipsing all over the world and leave your husband at home. What kind of a marriage would that be? No, I, I suppose not. Well, well, what would you do? I'd marry Anne and... No, no, I mean, who would you dance with? Well, I never thought of that. Not having you, I might try Anne if she wants to. She loves to dance and shows a lot of promise. Do you really think so? Yeah. Well, she was a little awkward myself. So were you when you started. Well, I know it, but, but it takes years to build a good team. You've always said that. And there's a lot of excitement in doing it. 
Well, that just isn't fair, Tommy. What isn't? I'm getting the short end of the stick. What? You want me to settle back and get out of the way while you go off with someone else and have all the fun. Well, I think it's rotten of you, Tommy. Simply rotten. Well, I didn't ask Everything's you to. Everything's been so perfect. We've had a wonderful life together. We've been very successful. How can you even consider breaking it up? And breaking it up for what? To get married? Oh, no, Tom. Marriage is a tough business. Well, you know what I've always thought of marriage. Responsibilities, obligations, a home to take care of. Maybe children to look after. Imagine being married to someone you're dancing with. If either the marriage or the dancing doesn't work out, both of them go kaflooey. Oh, no. No, Thomas. It's, it's a terrible chance to take. It is, isn't it? We mustn't do it. We've slaved too hard to get where we are. Why should we give it up? It does seem foolish, doesn't it? We're a team. And a darn good one. We ought to stay that way. Maybe you're right. Well, of course I'm right. Oh, you do see it, don't you, Tommy? Sure, I see it. It's you and me, just like it's always been. I'm sure we're doing the right thing. Thank you so much for deciding for me. Forget it. What a lovely day for a wedding, happy are we to say. It's a lovely day for a wedding, lovely in every way. The royal guard is off their guard and drink is got and got and yard. Big Ben has quite forgot the time of the day. The time of the day. What a lovely day for a wedding, over again we say. It's a lovely, lovely wedding, lovely, lovely wedding. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love like wedding day. Hello. Good morning, old chappie. Hello, Edgar. Good morning. I've come to take you to the wedding, and what a wedding parade we shall see. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. I say, what's the matter with you two this morning? You're all at sixes and sevens. Nothing's the matter. Let's go. You shall be married this afternoon. Oh, where, where? Clyde Street Church. I believe I know the minister there. This is a pretty box of pickles. I beg your pardon, sir. Now what do we do? Now we have to find Anne and John. Denise Brown? Well, I know what corner she's standing on. Where's John? She'll be leaving the Abbey for the reception any minute now. Well, you better find him. Ellie. 
I'm going to miss you a lot from now on. Tommy, you're a wonderful brother. Good luck, darling. Excuse me. Excuse me. trouble a small wedding would have been all right <laughs> 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 